So, uh, new addition to the family. I sold my 91 BMW that's been in a bunch of videos in the past, and I bought 1985 Nissan 300ZX. I, uh, I wanted one ever since we bought the race car like four or five months ago. I drove the race car like, I don't know, 200 yards. Really wanted one. I got this from a kid in Dallas and he was asking 2,500 for it. Um, it's got some issues, so I offered him 2,000 and he countered with uh, 17. So I took it. Now without even asking me, he was nice enough to coat the car with a lovely coat of spray paint, which has left some issues. Uh, here and there, a little bit, of, a little bit of overspray. I've actually been trying to learn Bondo to get the uh, to get the body all smooth. The issue right now is I'm trying to decide on a color. I'm torn between this really pretty uh, maroon with metal flakes, or this really pretty green with some metal flakes. It reminds me of the old European sports cars, like the Lotus Seven, things like that. I just I love that green. However, this is a lot closer to the original color of the car. If I go with the maroon, it'll save me a lot of time. I don't have to spend as much time on the door jams and whatnot, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments, maroon or green? All right, so uh, I'm in another part of the studio. This is more of the production side. Uh, this is a cheap temporary green screen we've got set up right now. Um, eventually, I'm gonna have a uh, green screen uh, infinity wall set up right here that's gonna wrap around. It's gonna go floor to ceiling, wrap around and have permanent lights set up, which and then uh, in the room next door is gonna be the white infinity wall. A lot of work to do. I don't know, the soundproofing still hasn't been done. It's a little echoey. And the AC fan's blowing right on my microphone. We're gonna move through it. When I first started doing YouTube about a year ago, a little over a year ago, I, I never saw myself doing uh, product reviews. I just, it didn't occur to me. But then those offers started coming in and I'll do them because I like Free things. That being said, um, the bigger my channel has gotten, the bigger the dollar value of the items that people will ask me to review gets. And with with that, and with that uh, increase in value, the more inclined those companies tend to be in demanding that I I like their products on camera. So I turn down a lot of stuff because I, I just I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to get on a moral high ground here, but I do see a lot of YouTubers who will tell you to go, oh, these are these are the best uh, finger screw things on the market and go buy it and use my affiliate link. So I turned down a lot of stuff that I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna like. I thought that would segue in nicely, but it didn't. I used to be a, a Krav Maga instructor for, for years, and one of the big uh, staples for being a good Krav Maga instructor is praise correct praise. It was a compliment sandwich for, particularly for uh, instructing new students. So if someone's doing something wrong, you compliment them, correct what they're doing wrong, and then compliment them again. I wanna use that technique in reviewing this gimbal. Today the thing we're gonna be looking at is the Smooth Mobile Gimbal. The only thing I ask for from a gimbal for a phone is it needs to be quick to set up, uh, it needs to be quiet, and it should be pretty intuitive. Phone cameras are designed to pull out of your pocket and quickly get up and running and start shooting some video or take photos. A gimbal designed for that platform should be the same. This is the iPhone uh, 8 Plus. Slider in. Power up. It's pretty good. Now it is quick. It keeps up with movement really well. Uh-oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a phone call. Hello? Where was I? There is a smooth app that allows the phone and the gimbal to communicate to one another. You can change camera frame rates, resolution settings. You can go from regular frame rates to slow-mo. You can switch between photo and video. Now the face tracking software is really cool. It works pretty well. It's not really something that I think I would use personally, but I think if you're if you're doing some sort of tutorial, if you do a lot of Instagram videos, maybe some sort of, maybe if you have a beauty channel. My five minute mini petty is done. Excited to see just how great my nails are gonna look. See these lines? Stress, destroyed dreams. Oh yeah. It feels like there's a squid on my face. Ladies, honestly, 
why. Check it out, Phantom of the Opera. Uh, not really my thing, but so on top of just the face tracking, it also has object tracking. So it does work pretty well, but you kind of need some sort of a flat, uh, non-textured background. I couldn't use the face tracking anytime that the subject's not looking at, at the camera, obviously. So I tried to use the object tracking. It, it struggles to do that anytime there's a textured background behind the subject. It can follow it for a little bit, like if your subject has a solid colored shirt, something that's like really bold colored, it'll it'll track that for a little bit, but it, it does struggle from time to time. On. Good. Now I was able to get it to follow my drone as long as it was against the sky, and that worked pretty well. Probably the most unique feature about the Smooth is the fact that, yeah, it does its gimbal stuff, but you can take it and extend it. Now you've got a really technologically advanced selfie stick. I found that like, when I was walking, or especially running, having it extended uh, uh, actually seemed a lot smoother. Now you can easily switch from your phone, turn this on its side, and pop in your GoPro just like that. Time for some criticism. When you use this move with your phone, uh, it's silent. There's no noise feeding into the phone. However, if you do use it with a GoPro, there is noise, and I'm not sure why that is. It could be that the GoPro's more sensitive to sound and vibration, which they are notorious for. High five. All right. Good job, man. It's a slight problem, not too big a deal, because usually 99% of the time, I never use my GoPro audio. My next problem with this move is you set up the GoPro and you frame your shots here on the back. Once you put it on the gimbal, um, you see with the problem without me having to say it? Luckily, GoPros are crazy wide angle, and uh, all these clips that I've gotten with the GoPro were shot just by guessing, just by like pointing the camera in the general direction. The third thing I don't like about the Smooth is the slow motion. It's bad, it's really bad. It could just be a firmware thing where they could do some sort of um, firmware update and it, it might fix it, but it's very jittery. What I wound up doing is getting out of the Smooth app, just going straight to my iPhone camera, turning on the slow-mo that way. That is buttery smooth. Jittery slow motion to me is just, why bother? Now I will say this thing is incredibly well made. The fact that they put this little stand on the bottom of it so you can set it down is huge. Gimbals that you can't set down and let go when, while you've got them set up with your phone or your camera or whatever they are is a huge pain in the butt. So having this is a big, Secondly, they have the ability to um, to power up your phone. So if you're low on battery, it comes with connection for iPhone and uh, non-iPhone. Time-lapse setting is actually really cool and it's very easy to set up. You uh, tell it how fast you want it to rotate and then you click your button four times. Tell it I want to start here and here. Now it will go from point A to point B all the while recording your time-lapse. It's super cool, really easy to use. My final thoughts on the Smooth is uh, I like it. It's 160 bucks. There seems to be sort of a price point on phone gimbals where somewhere around 100 to 120 bucks. Anything above that is pretty decent quality. Anything below that, it's going to be. Uh, if you like to travel light, it's packed with a lot of features. It's fairly easy to use. Gets really good quality stuff. If you'd like to be as cinematic as you can with your phone. I think this is a great option. 
So we got a few goals for this year. I want to get uh, back to my weekly uploads. Sarah goes back to school next week, and so that'll be a lot easier to do uh, when she's back in class. My second goal is I want to get to 20,000 subscribers for the end of this year, which is a good goal, but it's kind of out of my hands. Third, I'm going to finish the Z. And the last one is a goal I've had for a really long time, but I want to make it happen this year, and so I want to have an amateur boxing match. I really want to uh, punch up, so to speak. So um, I'm going to call it a bigger YouTuber. Potato Jet, you're bigger than me now. I'm, c I'm calling you out. I'm, I'm I'm calling you out. I want to have an amateur boxing match for the end of this year with you. I'll come to where you are in LA, or we can go to Vegas, meet in the middle. Uh, actually, the middle is uh, Juarez. Albuquerque, you have one week. I don't, I don't know why. That got, I didn't mean for that to sound dramatic. Gene's a lovely guy.